Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm at my parents' house and a few years ago I bought some antique chairs off of eBay, really, really cheap. I bought about a set of six of them and I started doing them up very slowly. I stripped the paint, I painted them sort of a whitish gray color, I reupholstered the seats and everything and then I got rid of about three of them and I've kept two of them for myself and then I kept the one at the head of the table which has arms and today I'm gonna be renovating that or over the next few days I'm gonna be restoring that so I'm gonna show you now so I've been keeping them in my parents garage for ages and this is what it looks like I've sort of worn the edges um, so that they look nice and natural and then I've reupholstered the seat as you can see the seats are very flat um, and this was a few years ago and so I've got two of these and then I've got this one but I actually want to do this one to a different standard I don't want to paint it I just want to strip this dark varnish and leave it a natural wood color and then I might reupholster in the same fabric because I do like this one um, or I might go for something different but I thought I'd show you some of the process behind that because I would like this to go in my bedroom and I probably will sell this. What do you think to my hideous little jacket, my fleece? I love it. I got this from a charity shop. <laughs> this was years ago and I keep it at my parents' house and my parents think it's so ugly and I know it's ugly but I also think it's cool. Right, let's try and pop out the seat of this chair. So as you can see, it's really flat. It's just stapled quite badly onto here. Someone clearly, oh, big spider on it. Oh my gosh, ew. Um, someone obviously reupholstered this at some stage with a horrific material. They didn't stuff any padding in it. In fact, should we just, I might need to get, yeah, let's rip all this up. Oh my gosh, I'm remembering this now, guys. There's an even worse upholstery job on the other side of this. It's almost like a plastic fake leather effect. Um, oh wow. There we go. Look at that. Horrific. I might even rip this off. I'm not gonna do that just yet. Let's get back to the chair. Right, I've actually just coated it all in the paint stripper. I was just gonna test a bit because basically, going forward, I want to use some eco-friendly water-based paint strippers. But when I was doing these chairs a few years ago, I bought a load of the cheapest paint and varnish remover I could find, which isn't very good for the environment. Um, and it's quite rough on these pieces of furniture. So I thought, so I don't waste stuff. I'll finish this off, but I don't know if it's out of date because it is quite old. So, but as you can see, I think it is starting to blister and peel so yeah I'm just gonna leave that for an hour then it needs a second coat and then I can start scouring it off right here we go it has had two very generous coats and you can see that it is blistering away so I've now got a bucket of some warm water and a scourer and I've got a glove on my hand that's holding the camera so I'm gonna give this a go let's have a look let's just I think it is coming away a little bit. Let's try it on a dark bit because the arms are a little bit worn anyway. Oh yeah, you can see it's coming off. You're not gonna see the full effect because now the wood is wet, um, but once it dries out, it's gonna look stunning. taken off as much as I can. There are little bits I think that, well these are still drying out, 
but you can see it's drying out on top a lot more. Um, so what I want to do after this, I'm going to sand it, probably not today, but maybe tomorrow, sand it down, and then I want to put some sort of varnish on it to bring out the colour a bit more, and then obviously seal it. Um, and then it would be time to work on the seat itself. But yeah, there's a few bits on the underside that I missed, so I might need to reapply some overnight. But yeah, it is looking better. Also, my parents are doing some planting, hence why that's there, to keep the dogs off. <laughs> hey guys, it's the next day, it's day two, and I have just reapplied some more paint stripper to some areas that were a bit stubborn, or maybe I just missed them, so I've done a few of the bottom bits. Um, but I'm gonna now take off this layer. It's not coming away very easily, but as you can see here, it's almost like an animal print, but it's not an animal print. It's all just like, I don't know. I don't know the material. Obviously there you can see the sort of material, but hideous. And then you've got the old stuffing underneath. You can see animal hair and all sorts. So yeah, I'm gonna replace all of that because that won't be good for my allergies. Right, so here we go. Here we can see that it was upholstered. So this weird sort of animalish print that you can see on the edge there, it's obviously made out of this material. Then this horrible light brown stuff is almost like a sticky back plastic UPVC thing that they've stuck on top and then stapled in. And then someone has reupholstered in some weird green fabric. But anyway, this is what is underneath. So I'll just take that off and then I can put some new foam down and re-upholster this board. Right, I just went to B&Q with my dad. I got some varnish. Dad needed to get some stuff for a DIY project upstairs in their bedroom. And um, we went and got my mum a paint pot sample because uh, they're actually redecorating the entire living room. Everything's going, like the fireplace, the dado rail, everything. So um, they're just deciding on colours. So I'm just taking a bit of a break from my DIY project to help mum with her. She said, put, get it on the wall. So. Let's, let's get it on here. So this is a more of a greeny grey. Um, oh yeah. Oh I like that. Yeah, very nice. This is called French grey. I really like that. It's a bit sage greeny. Oh I like that. It's quite dark but I think it will dry lighter. Very nice. Anyway, I won't be documenting that process because it's not my house, not my project. But it will all be done when we're in Florida. So I go on a family holiday to Florida in about four weeks time we're going for two weeks and during those two weeks people are going to come into our house and redo the entire living room so yeah they just need to decide on a color anyway back to my project <laughs> right so this is the varnish that i've decided to go for it's a medium oak sort of varnish so hopefully it will bring out a bit of the color of the chair but retain the lovely wood grain but anyway i need to strip the remaining little bits of old varnish on it Right, I've just trialed sanding it down a little bit. So this is me having sanded. This is not sanded. I mean, you probably can't notice the difference. I can feel the difference, but yeah, let's get cracking. These bits are gonna be a nightmare, but this is why I absolutely love this chair, is how much effort and time they took on creating these. No one does this with modern chairs anymore. One thing I've forgotten about doing all this is how much your hand hurts, whether it's like painting or like <laughs> stripping with the wire wool or whether you're, you know, sanding down. My right hand, because I'm right-handed, feels like it's all cramping. So um, yeah, it's not great. But anyway, it's starting to look good. It's sort of the bare wood now. You can see it needs obviously a wipe down. Also, I need to do some repair work on it because as you can see here, the mortise and tenon joins are coming out. So. I need to glue them and then knock them back in and then it will be as sturdy as anything. It reminds me of my GCSE resistant materials days. If you're not from the UK, they're the exams you do when you're 16, I think. And I did resistant materials, which is woodwork, metalwork, 
working with plastic, acrylics, everything. So I think I made I made an ottoman for my GCSE final piece. I also made a chair which I threw in the skip like about a year ago when we were clearing out the loft in the house here. And mum and, and mum went and fished it out the skip. She was like, "You can't throw it away. You made this." I was like, "Yeah, but it's rubbish." Because I made that when I was in like year seven, and then I made the ottoman in year eleven, which you can see the remains of it here. This was like, I don't know, 15 years ago, and I was spray painting my wood, um, and it's never come off the side of the house. <laughs> so I've just realized that sadly, I do not have enough fabric to do the seat. So these are just the offcuts, but this I bought this years ago, so um, I'll just have to look online for a new type of material. Right, but what we will do is we will do the rest of the seat. So we've got some foam here, and we've got some of this, I don't know what this is called, but you put the foam on, wrap that around it, staple it into the bottom, and then it's just ready for the fabric. So let's get this measured out. So I also, I could start taking the staples out of the bottom of that actually. It's another job. Um, I spin it around this way to fit nicely. I've got a pen. I actually think I want the foam a little bit smaller than this board, but what I'll do is cut it to size, and then I can uh, always trim it down. There we go, so I've just trimmed off some of the edges. So as you can see, you can see a bit of the baseboard coming out. And the reason you do that is just so that it's not completely, absolutely stuffed full, because obviously we've got to put that on top of it, and then the fabric as well, so there we go. But actually, what I'm gonna do now is take all the nails and staples out of the back of this. I'm making my way through with a screwdriver and some pliers, and I've got quite a lot of staples and nails out of it but still a lot to go it is quite a long project it does make you think when you get started you're like this is fun and then you're like oh like i didn't anticipate how long this would take i mean essentially if you had one full day you could do it all in one day because i started in the afternoon yesterday and i've done bits and bobs on it today at quite a leisurely pace so you could do it all in one day but it's like a whole entire day of your life spent on one chair but uh It'll be worth it, it's so beautiful and I cannot wait to take it back to London and put it in my bedroom. But yeah, still a lot to do. I'm annoyed about the fabric, so I now need to go fabric shopping. Yeah, which is annoying, I thought I had enough, but I don't. Right, I managed to get all of the nails and staples out of this and what I've done is I've got, I don't even know what this is called, but this on the bottom. What you wanna do now is just pull it really, really taut and I'm gonna put a few staples in, but I'm gonna save it for when I've got the rest of the fabric. So this is the finished product. I've just done a few staples on the bottom. Obviously when I get some fabric, I'm gonna trim all of this away um, and the fabric's gonna go over the top. I'm just gonna see if I can knock these joints in gently. Let's see, I don't wanna break anything. Imagine if I broke the chair, I'd be devastated. As I said, it's mortise and tenon joins and I think I can just tap it in, but obviously I don't wanna hammer, thank you Ava, I don't wanna hammer this wood here because I don't wanna damage it. So I've got an Ava move. I've got an, um, an old piece of wood, and I'll just pop that on top and try and tap it into place. It won't go in. Glue? No, just even without glue, it won't go in. It will. Have you glued them, though? No. There we go, my dad did it. I was too scared I was gonna break it. <laughs> but we've um, managed to glue these bottom ones, so I'll do the important job of wiping the glue away. Thank goodness for dads. Oh my gosh, guys, I just had a brainwave. I was just sat looking for fabrics on my computer and I just thought, hang on, I think I've got a bin liner full of fabric <laughs> in my wardrobe. Because again, another weird fact about me, I feel like <laughs> the real Joel is actually quite different to the Joel online previously. Like, you guys didn't know I collected antique books. Lots of people don't know that I sort of did woodwork and stuff. Another thing I did, I used to make cushion covers and sell them on Etsy, hence why I have a massive bin liner full of fabrics that I haven't used for years. I can't remember what's in here, so let's have a rummage through and see what I've got. I'm such a sad person. <laughs> right, here we go. I even think there are some cushion covers still. Oh my gosh. These are actually the cushion covers that I made. I really like this one, the black one. Maybe I'll do that on the seat. Something a bit more traditional. Um, wow, see, like this, sewed all that myself, I'm clever aren't I, do you remember when I did all that? I do. <laughs> uh, I'm so weird, but hey, if anyone wants a cushion cover, I've got lots of them, lots of unsold stock. <laughs> right, 
I have a lot of fabric. So all of these here are the cushion covers that I've made up and there's even more in here. And then all of this is fabric that I haven't used. Um, so it depends if I want to go for something very modern and geometric like this. I think I got lots of these actually in Walmart in America because these have a dollar sign on them. So I think they're American fabric. I do like this one as well. Um, I don't know, the choices are endless. Oh my gosh, I still have some of my favorite fabric. Oh no, I don't. Maybe? Just off cuts. Oh, I love this one. I know it's a bit old housewifey, but I remember really enjoying that fabric. I sold out of those cushions, they went quite quick. Got some plain stuff, more geometric. I used to love geometric stuff. Um, the trouble is, I want something that is quite, look at that, with Hessian on one side, this is a cushion cover and then some stone on the other. Don't know why I thought that was a good idea. It's not very fashionable. Trouble is, I want something that's quite traditional because it's a Victorian chair and I live in a Victorian house, so I would quite like something more traditional. So, and usually that means quite floral and decorative. Floral? Floral and decorative. Yeah, I don't, oh, mum had a cushion like that. I gave one of these to her, didn't I? Do you remember that? Hmm. That could work. Really? That's it. There we go. Right, I'm leaving the conservatory in a state. Let's go and see what this would look like next to this chair. I think that would go really nicely, but obviously the chair's not finished yet. I need to varnish it. Right, here we go. I've stapled the side so far. The hardest part are the corners because obviously now if I fold this over, it's just a really thick bunched corner. So you have to be quite inventive with these and um, I usually cut out the excess material from the corner just so I can get it nice and taut. Here we go, it's all stapled. Dun, da, da, da. Lovely. Should we try it in already even though the chair is not finished? Let's have a look. Go in something like that and I'll tap it in eventually. Oh I like that. Very traditional. Right and so the varnish begins. Apparently it says it could do with two to three coats of varnish with an hour in between each coat. So it might be a few hours until this is complete. I'll be done by dinner time, hopefully. This video is gonna be like watching paint dry. Right, it's six o'clock and I've finished. So this has actually only taken just over 24 hours. Here we go. Look at it. Look at that. I'm really pleased with this fabric. I love all of this. Is it beadwork or whatever it's called on the legs? So nice. And this medium oak varnish, it's had two coats of the varnish and um, it's given it just the right effect that I wanted. So that is gonna go nicely in my house. Now I just need to get it back to London, put it in my car without breaking it. But it is very, very sturdy, which is good, which is probably obvious, because in the olden days, they just make things that last, don't they? But very good. Here we go. You can't see it that well, because it's very bright today and the window is there. Right, this is slightly better lighting. Here's the finished product in my bedroom with my new wardrobe doors. Sometimes I flip the chair around and stare out of the window and just watch life pass by. Absolutely love it. To be honest, it does become a little bit of a, uh, oh, I'll just chuck some clothes on there. But that was inevitable. But I absolutely love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit of a different video. It's something traditionally I would never normally film. But then I was like, oh, I feel like some people would be interested because it's part of like the home renovation type vlogs. So if you do want to see more DIY type videos, let me know because I'm happy to keep doing more of those. I love antique shopping, trying to get things back to the way they were or even better than they were. But if you haven't already, please click subscribe. I post videos every single week. And yes, what else is there to tell you? If you want to become a member, then I just posted a members only video. I normally only do members only live streams, which I'm doing a members only live stream tonight. But the other day I felt like posting a members only video. So if you wanna become a member, you can do that. The link will be down below. Just click the join button. And don't forget I'm on Cameo. So if you want a Cameo, let me know. And I can do that for you. Anyway, see you soon. Bye.